Hello everybody, we're going to be working with some rational inequalities today, which means we have an inequality and we have a fraction, which gives us our rational part. And I do want to remind everybody, if you look at your essay question, you will see the fraction, the, the minus a number, but you will not actually see an inequality. So be sure you do add the less than zero at the end. Tack that on, that was a typo on, on the part of the course developers, and we do need that there, um, because you're going to be trying to solve something if you don't add that that doesn't actually have an inequality. So just go ahead, tack that one on the end, and then you're going to solve it um, using the same kind of technique that we're going to look at. The first thing we're going to deal with is getting a common denominator. So I am going to use my common denominator of x plus 5, which means I need to multiply my negative 4 times x plus 5. So I get that x plus 5 over on the bottom. And that's going to involve some distributing. Which will then give me on the top of my fraction x minus 4 minus 4x minus 20 all over x plus 5. And that's still all going to be less than 0. Go ahead and combine some like terms. Some x's to give me negative um, 3x. As well as some numbers to give me negative 24. And my bottom is actually going to stay the same. x plus 5. Okay, now we have to do some math and some solving to get what we call our boundary points that are going to define our solution regions. And we're going to do this by taking both our numerator, or our top, and setting that equal to 0. And that has to do with, because the fact that this is less than 0, the top, if the top has got to be less than 0 as well. So that's going to give us a, a defining boundary point. And we also take our bottom and set that equal to 0, or our denominator. And we do that because zeros are not allowed in the bottom of fractions. And this is going to help us know which values we should avoid to, to avoid having that 0. So I'm going to go ahead and do some solving for x. Um, I'll deal with each one separately. So I'm going to, I know those turned out to look like 29s, but I promise they're really 24s. And get my first boundary point of negative 8. I'm going to label these for you. And my second one is actually a little bit easier because we're just going to subtract 5 from both sides. And these are what we call boundary points. And they essentially divide our number line into three boundaries or regions. And we want to find out which regions are going to be solutions. So we have the negative 8 and the negative 5. And they... they, they, they um, We'll take our number line and divide it into these three boundaries. We have um, area number one, which is to the left of negative eight. Area number two, between the two of them. And area number three, to the right of negative five. And we want to find out which of those three regions are going to house or keep the solutions to our inequality. And I'm going to do that by doing some test points. And test points are any value in the region. And you get to choose what values you want, as long as they're within one from each region. And, and we're going to test them in our original inequality to see if they're true or not. And that's going to help guide us as to which are, um, which are going to be solutions and which are not. So from the first region, I'm going to choose negative 10 as a test value. And we're going to plug that into our original equation. So negative 10 minus 4, negative 10 plus 5, 
minus 4. And we want to see if that's going to be less than 0. Okay. So on the top I have negative 14. On the bottom I have 5. And yes, I know you're going to end up with a decimal, but that's okay. We have negative 2.8 minus 4, which gives me negative 6.8. And since negative 6.8 is less than 0, we say that is true. And that is going to be one of our solution regions. And since it's a solution region, I'm going to color it green to indicate this is a good area. Then we're going to move on and test a value from the middle area. And it's going to be anything in between negative 8 and negative 5. And so I am going to choose for my test value negative 6. And I'm going to go ahead and test that using the same idea. I'm filling it in where we saw the x in our original solution. So negative 6 minus 4 over negative 6 plus 5 minus 4 gives me negative 10 over negative 1 minus 4 or 10 minus 4 which is 6 and last time I checked 6 is not less than 0 that is a false statement and since it gives us a false statement that means that 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 region is not a solution so we're gonna color that region in there red for no dice no solution And then last, we're going to try a value from the upper region, or the right of negative 5. And I'm going to try out 0. So I'll put 0 in my equation for x. and get negative 4 fifths minus 4 or negative 0.8 minus 4 which gives me negative 4.8 since negative 4.8 is indeed less than 0 and that is a true statement that is my green region also that is a good region that's um, going to be a solution to my inequality. So what I ended up with was two green regions and a red region. So now I need to write out my solution. I'm going to come up here and write out my solution. And we want to write out our solution so we have in math um, symbols a representation of what our solution is going to be. So we're going to create a little solution box here to put it in. And there's actually two ways we can write this. We can write that x is less than negative 8. Any values less than negative 8 are going to work. And any values greater than negative 5 are going to work. And that comes from my test values. The less than negative 8 would be here, and the greater than negative 5 would be here. Or you could write any value, any number from negative infinity to negative 8 or any value from negative 5 to infinity. Those are going to be values that are going to work. How you decide to write your solution um, using method 1 or method 2 is completely up to you. Just be sure you have clearly indicated your solution and don't leave it um, as just which test values are true and which are false. We do want to indicate um, how the regions come in because we don't want to just say negative 10 is, is not just a solution. We want to indicate that it's any number less than negative 8. So you do want some indication whether it's method 1 or method 2 is your choice as long as we have a final indication as to which regions are going to give us a solution to our original rational inequality.